and welcome to another Piper Pearl. Today's Pearl, we're going to be looking at dermatome mapping. Now, if you've been a clinician for a minute, you've definitely seen the map that looks a little bit weird, it's got colour patterns all over it, and you know it's got something to do with the spinal nerves and something to do with sensation. But whilst it's very handy to look at sensation and testing towards any lesions and spinal injuries, it also can be very useful in certain viral infections uh, like your herpes zoster. So today we're just going to go through the dermatones, have a quick look at anatomy, and then maybe some tips on how you can map the dermatones in order to get a better understanding in what you're looking at. So to start off, we'll look at what a dermatone is. So dermatone itself is a region that is divided according to its sensory nerve. So it comes off the spinal nerves and it's the dorsal head of the spinal nerves that is responsible for sensory input and it's mapped throughout the body. It was first noted a long time ago. There's evidence in the late 1800s of people referencing dermatones uh, associated with the herpes virus, but it wasn't until around 1990 that it was first mapped. And that's a picture on the right of its first mapping. So as you can see, it was a little bit different to what it is uh, at the moment. They were using Ds instead of Ts, and obviously it didn't cover the same areas and the same coverage that the modern maps do today, because it was more associated with where rashes and things like that were found. Now along the same spinal area, if you will, the same spinal nerves are also responsible for, for things called myotomes. But myotomes are linked directly to the muscle and they're involved in actual movement. Okay, so dermatones are not the same, even though they follow the same spinal nerve point of origin. Now looking closer at the spinal nerves themselves, if you remember all the way back at anatomy, you'll know that each spinal nerve has two roots. It has a ventral root, which is associated with motor, and that's motor for your visceral, so that's your autonomic nervous system, and your somatic motor nerve as well. So that's the ventral root. The one that we're interested in today, when we're talking about dermatones, is the dorsal root, and that has sensation. So the dorsal root is involved with signals coming in to the spine before it goes to the brain for interpretation. So the dorsal head receives information from the somatic, so the sensation, the skin, and also the visceral. So yes, your skin is an organ, but it also has sensations from your other organs. So as the messages and the sensations come in, it obviously goes to the brain, and then when it comes back down, it travels out the ventral route in order for some sort of kinetic output. If you were to follow the dorsal roots of all these spinal nerves, then we'll get dermatones itself. So when you look at a dermatone, you can generally get an idea of where they're going to run based on where the actual spinal nerves originate from. And imagine they've got long tree roots, if you will, coming out from there and they're responsible for different areas. Now the easiest uh, area to get your head around is obviously the thoracic region, with the only one that's slightly difficult is T1, that moves down sort of the inside of the arm. But when we look at the cervical region, it can be difficult. So C1 doesn't do a lot of sensation, it's, it's, it's really quite small, whereas C2 is all about the back of the head. Common landmarks when you get down to the hand, it can be quite difficult. Your C6 is all associated with the thumb. C7 is all about the middle finger. And then C8 is the little finger itself. So thumb, middle finger, little finger, six, seven, and eight. You will see some pictures that it's not as clear. I've got an example coming up, but if you just remember those landmarks, then it's really helpful when you're dealing with sensation, not as helpful when we're dealing with viral infections. T4 is a classic one to remember, and T10 is around that belly button area. When we get to the legs, it can get quite difficult as well. Best way to remember it is the front of the legs, 
are mostly associated with the lumbar region and the back of the legs are more associated with the sacral region. The only difference to that is the back of the legs will wrap around to your pinky toes and that is S1. So when we understand the way spinal nerves and everything travel along the body, when we have the person standing in the anatomical position like this, it can be quite difficult to get our heads around and map. So this picture can be more useful. And I even think it would be even more useful if the person were to straighten their hands down and point their toes, more like if you imagine the spine has just been pulled straight and the spinal nerves have been allowed to drop and whatever flesh it would naturally drop on is pretty much where the coverage comes from. So as you can see in this one, C8 is denoted by the middle finger as opposed to the pinky. Okay, so the best thing you can do if you really want to get into the hand is actually have a close look at the hand regions themselves. There are pictures available, but remember those landmarks I mentioned before. So that's where they map, and that's how it all looks. The clinical significance has all got to do with our varicella zoster, okay, or shingles. Shingles is one of those herpes virus that usually affects children in the form of chickenpox. And herpes are notorious for staying and housing themselves within the ganglion of the dorsal root. And they'll stay there for years, many, many, many years. And then all of a sudden, if the immune system gets compromised or the individual gets under a significant amount of stress, then it will come back. But when it comes back, it often comes back in the form of shingles as opposed to chickenpox. That's one of the reasons why we have vaccinations for the varicella zoster is because it can be quite a dangerous one. It can affect the C area, so therefore affecting the occipital region, but most of the time it affects the T ganglion. So you'll get a rash around the trunk of your actual torso and sometimes your abdomen. Now it has three stages. It's pre-eruption phase. The person will complain of a sensation of slight burning, itching, but there won't really be anything remarkable to see, but they'll be able to trace it along the dermatome. During the eruption stage, you'll get these classic rashes, like these ones here that you'll see on the screen. Now the top two are eruption phase. They're red, they're raised, they're non-blanching. Good trick you can do is get a glass it's a drinking glass and press it against the actual rash and it won't change color. It doesn't change color, it's usually indicative of a slightly more sinister rash and in this case shingles itself. Now shingles can hospitalize people, it can get them really sick, can affect other organs and can actually be life-threatening as well. So other people will get shingles and they'll just be a little bit unwell and basically itchy whereas other people will get it and they can be hospitalized so don't treat it as lip service because uh, it can be quite dangerous the final phase is what you see in the bottom left and that is the scarring phase mostly associated with people scratching at the rash you'll see it travels along the dermatome as well obviously but it's left with scars that are subject to secondary infections so that brings us to the end of dermatome mapping. Just a nice short one, or well, from my perspective, short one. Realistically, clinical significance of dermatomes uh, is a lot more to do with sensation mapping and testing people's uh, post-spinal injuries or some sort of neuropathies, but it can be particularly important when you're dealing with varicella zoster. And you really need to look out for that particular rash, even if the person has had chickenpox or even had the vaccine in the past, it doesn't mean they are completely immune to getting shingles. But until next time, take care.